Well, like you said, I, I was going to kind of lead in with y'all. I'm sure some of y'all's noticed that I've been taking a little more interest lately in the activities that goes around on around here concerning our kids. And let's just say that the two words, attention span, uh, are beginning to mean a lot more to me in the in recent days. Uh, it, it reminds me of the story of a young seminary student who graduated top of his class with a minor in early childhood education, and he took his, uh, his first job, his first call into the ministry was at a really big, really nice, well-to-do uh, suburban church, and on his first Sunday, he, this uh, well-polished seminary student thought that it would be a good idea to greet the kids and... and uh, First things first, just kind of find out where they stood as far as the Bible and things of God and what they understood. So uh, the first thing he asked on his first Sunday morning was, what would you like me to preach about this morning? And little Tommy jumped up in the back row and said, I'd like you to preach about three minutes. <laughs> so uh, attention span is, uh, you know, time is of the essence. And of course, in honor of our monthly conference, I will probably... Uh, just kind of be brief tonight. We'll share. I might. I don't know. Spirit might take over, and we might preach just a little bit, Brother Daryl. But uh, let's open with a word of prayer. I can't, I can't think of a better way to start. Lord, I thank you for this night. I thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for what you're doing in the life of this church. I uh, pray that you would just go with us in this time. Uh, you take all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, Verse 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now the Bible also says in Psalm 37, verse 23, that uh, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Now I'm not here tonight to tell you how good of a man I am. If you notice, that verse said, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. But we got to ask a question real quick. Who does God call good? If the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, I want to tell you all something. In the verses uh, prior to verse 10, the Bible says, Paul, you know, he's writing to the Ephesians, and he tells them, he says, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the other. There's not a man, woman, boy, and girl here tonight that if you're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and you're alive in Christ, as I am alive in Christ, none of us have always been that way. None of us. We were all dead in sins and trespasses, and that's certainly true for me before. You know, uh, I don't know about y'all, but it's been a good weekend, and I've had a pretty good Father's Day. Uh, yesterday I spent uh, my Saturday over in Statesboro with my wife. We went and did a little shopping. I think we shopped a little more leaning towards stuff for her than me, but hey, what can you say? Uh, but it was a great day, but uh, on top of all that, yesterday was two years ago that I settled the issue, uh, nailed down the, my salvation, if you will, and, and fully, completely trusted in Christ as my Lord and Savior and quit leaning on things that I could do to fix myself. Uh, and we, we tend to uh, try to lean a little bit on ourselves, but before yesterday, two years ago, I was dead in sin and trespass. My life was marked by a pattern of sin and trespasses. Sin, of course, speaks to falling short of God's righteous uh, requirement and trespasses speaks of deliberate things that we do to break God's law, but it says we were all like that. And it was natural. That's, that's the natural tendency of people when they're outside of Christ is to lean toward doing evil. And uh, there's, two little word, there's two little words that we've been talking about with our kids, but now 
over in uh, Romans chapter 3. We've been talking about but now, but here in Ephesians it says, but God. Two little words, but they carry so much weight. Because if it was up to mankind and his own, you know, if it was all up to me, all I'd have is death. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up together and made to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now two years ago, Almost immediately at the moment of salvation, I wanted to walk out of my job and just quit everything right then and go preach on the sidewalk. God put within my soul a deep desire to tell the gospel to the world to everybody that I passed, and I could not explain it. Things got really rough at my house because my nose was planted in my Bible for hours, like almost as if my family wasn't there. And I know that's, that's probably not the best practice, but I, I could not get enough Bible. I could not get enough Jesus. And Tasha didn't understand it. And everybody that's been paying attention around here knows that... Uh, Let's rewind two years ago. We had VBS. They ended VBS. I come down and made my public profession uh, the, the day that Stephen Benet come and shared about what, what all they did in VBS. And, and from that time on, you know, things got rough in my house because as we, as we moved along, we found out we were, we were unequally yoked at that point. Uh, Brother daryl has been talking about making... Uh, making right some of uh, things that we've done wrong to people in the past. And there came a time when at my house we had to have a hard conversation about some things. And I, I just poured my heart out to my wife. And uh, usually, I'll just be honest with you, usually in my past, my past was I wasn't really sorry about things until I got caught. But there were some things that I needed to get off my chest to my wife that I could have just went our whole life without her ever knowing, and I, you know, I probably wouldn't have been able to sleep at night, but at least, you know, she wouldn't be mad at me or whatever, but I, the, once the truth gets inside of you people, the truth's got to come out. Now, I'm not going to share all the details with you tonight, because one, it's none of your business, and two, it's been settled with Jesus, okay? But... At that night, that night, I'll tell you this, the only reason that we're still here today and we're still married is because of the love of Jesus Christ. And when she shared, she shared with me, she said, I don't see what you have in my life. Uh, things have been uh, stressful around here because you're so in love with Jesus and you're so in love with the Bible and things at church. And it just seems like you not really got any focus on me and the girl or Addie. It was just Addie at the time. You know, uh, I don't have what you have. Not to brag on me, but she realized something was there that, that was kind of missing in her heart. So if anybody was paying attention, I got in the baptismal pool, got dunked after I made my public profession. A few months later, lo and behold, Tasha's in the pool. So that, that's what happened, okay? There was a night where I had to complain about some things. She realized that this was for real. She said, now I know that definitely something's up, and I don't have that. So... We settled the issue for Tasha. She's in the baptismal pool. Things are going, and all this time I still have the urge to preach the gospel, to, to tell people about Jesus, to teach the word, to, to minister to people. And it's like, what am I going to do? Uh, <clears throat> I don't understand why you would uh, give me the desire to do this. I'm not the one. I, I struggled forever with the P word. We just called it the P word. I wasn't going to say preach. Okay, because I know some things that I've done to the people around places that were there with me when I was doing it. If they heard I was preaching, 
they would, they would raise an eyebrow. Let's just put it that way. But I had this desire, but I, I would not tell anybody that I wanted to do it. I just prayed about it and prayed about it and prayed about it. And finally, Brother Darrell asked me to start preaching, uh, to start filling in some. And I might be getting some of my events out of order, but I, I'm kind of going from memory. But point is, what I'm trying to tell you, I, I was given a deep desire to do the work. But it kept going back to what am I going to do? How am I going to make it happen? Where am I going to fit in? Uh, what is it you want me to do? Well, the opportunities kind of kept coming at a couple of different places. And we know what happened with Brother Darrell as far as the surgery and getting hurt and being out longer than he thought. You know, that was a bad, that, we all was like, well, that's just horrible. You know, but I've heard so many people just talking about Adam and saying, you know, if nothing else, you know, God blessed us through that situation and what he's done with Adam. And he has. I mean, that's true. But there, we, we didn't know that there would be a time when nobody saw Fred leaving. Nobody expected that to happen. And here I am, you know, God's given me a desire to preach. And... Robert Jeffress, of all people, we, you know, uh, say what you want to about him. The man's a, a wonderful uh, preacher of the word, and he's got a lot of good insight. I was listening to him one day. He said, you know, if God's given you a desire to preach, and he's uh, obviously gifting you in that area, and, you know, people's going to start recognizing it. Uh, uh, opportunity's going to come up. Openings is going to start take, taking place. And I was like, well, huh, the right about this time that, Robert's telling me this because, of course, he was talking to me. You know, he wasn't on that radio broadcast talking to anybody else in America. He had to be talking to me, right? So I'm like, I got the desire. There's the opening. I'm willing, but I was like, you know, I'm not going to go ask anybody and beg them to let me be part of what's going on in our older youth. Well, I didn't have to. People, you know, I mean, of course, you know, if anybody had asked, I would have been like, yes. And, and I had already been doing work with him, but I got a chance to do a lot. And I just felt like that's, you know, that might be where God's leading me. I, I don't know. Uh, time goes on. We, we get some, uh, I'm assuming we had some candidates, some people that applied. And, and we went through the interview process, but we've hired Adam. So none of those guys worked out. And it came to a point right before, you know, right about the time probably that the, the leadership started talking to Adam seriously about doing this, my heart started changing about uh, older youth. Like, uh, not, not necessarily that I was starting to change my mind as far as wanting to do it, but I started getting patient with, if this is not what God wants me to do, then I'm okay with it kind of thing. I was pulling on the door and, and, and in my heart, just pouring my heart out to God, you know, why ain't they, why haven't they already come to me? Why hasn't the church, you know, mentioned me doing this or whatever? I wasn't even thinking about Adam because I didn't think Adam was interested in doing it at the time. But I, I, I kept, you know, up until that point, I was like, what am I going to do to, to I, I think God's calling me into ministry. How am I going to make it happen? Well, you don't have to make it happen, okay? God's going to work it over. The steps of a good man are directed by the Lord. And we've talked about in Ephesians 2.10, he's got good works planned out for us that he basically foreordained ahead of time that, that he set up. But I was sharing with the younger youth committee the other night that if patience is not involved in your situation that it might not be of God because patience is a fruit of the Spirit. And uh, about the time that I started, you know, I, my posture toward the whole situation became a posture of patience. I find out that Adam, you know, Adam's going to uh, take the uh, job with the older youth. And, and you would think that I might kind of scratch my head and be like, you know, I you know, jealous or whatever because I wanted to do it. But it wasn't like that. I was happy for Adam because God 
was working on my heart, and, and I wasn't even prepared for it, okay? Because we're talking about the steps being ordered by the Lord. Well, let me tell you, you know, he said it was an accident or a little bit of an accident that God got a hold of me with the kids, but I don't believe in accident. I don't believe in circum like a, a coincidence. A couple of months back, we're coming out of Sunday school, and probably one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life Right there in the social hall, Tasha was sitting at the end of the table studying. Uh, just She had a piece of paper out reading it, and that was odd. That's One, she wasn't in the place she was supposed to be at that time. and, and to, I mean, it just looked to me like she was preparing to, to teach something. So I asked her, I was like, you know, what are you doing? And she said, Ansley was supposed to fill in for Miss Kay. One of the kids was sick. Jonathan asked me to do kids' worship, and I like a dummy because months back, Kay had announced in conference, or it was announced for Kay in conference, that they were looking for somebody to step up because she felt led to, to step out. And at that time, months and months back, even before Fred left, I said, no way. Like, that's not for me, that's not where I want to be. I, God's calling me to ministry, okay? That's that's what that's where my mind was. And I was like, if God's calling me to ministry, why would he send me to the land of snotty noses and skint knees and prayer requests for puppies? And, you know, why would he send me there if he's calling me to ministry, okay? And my attitude was wrong. But it was about the time that I was preparing, you know, at the senior recognition uh, this year, uh, I, I preached on Daniel chapter 2. Well, I, when I'm preaching on something, I'm, I'm reading everything around it, before it and after it, and trying to keep everything in context as best I can. We got a long way to go there, but I'll get there. Uh, I was, I'd been studying the book of Daniel. Uh, pretty good, and then she said, I, "I'm on. I'm on. I guess I'm just gonna have to wing it." They they kind of just gave it to me because nobody else is here, and I, and I said, I, "Like a dummy, I was like, what are you teaching them? Daniel chapter one. Again, you know, my attitude up to that point was no way, no how. I'm not dealing with the little kids. But before I could think about it, out of my mouth comes, "I've been reading Daniel." She goes, why don't you do it? I say, what? Me? And I did this number. I think you got the wrong one. And I turned around to walk to big church. But about the time I got to the door, right around there where Brother Daryl's shaking hands every morning uh, after we break to go to Sunday school, Nobody was around me, and I know I didn't say it. I'm not saying I heard an audible voice, but in my mind it's ingrained as if I did hear an audible voice. And I know it wasn't the devil telling me to do it, because this ain't something the devil would want somebody to do. But God impressed on my heart. You think that I'm calling you to preach, and you can't preach to some children? You got a big problem, buddy. Like monumental problems with what it means to be in the ministry anyway. Turn yourself around and go teach those children. And I'm not smart enough to do this. I'm not, I'm not wise enough to turn around right when he said to do it and do it. For months, it was, no, I don't want to do that. I've been called to ministry. But he said, turn around and teach those children. And it was the most fun that I've ever had in my life. That's the best time that I've ever had sharing God's word with anybody. And I can't explain it. Except God said, if you think that I've called you to preach and you can't preach children, 
you got a big problem. I'm not the best equipped. I'm not the best with kids. I, I could, you know, when it comes to kids, I got two of my own. They're little. I've not been through these phases. I don't know how to deal with them. But I know that my God knows how to deal with them. And, and regardless of my failures and my faults and stuff that's gone on in my past and, and all these reasons for why I would say no, I've surrendered to do the work. Regardless of what other people do, say, or think. So far, you know, when, when, when God has another plan, people start moving. When God has another plan, people start coming together. Nobody has given me any resistance to any of it. Nobody knew that Tiffany was going to uh, step out of the Awana program. Nobody knew that all of that would come open for, this, for one person to do and that people would even be willing for one person to do it. But God moved my heart to do it. But through all this time, all these questions, all these, you know, what am I going to do? Where am I going to end up? Uh, all the opportunities I could have had. There, there was one point, I'm telling you, I could have lied to a church and said, I feel called to go, to go into youth ministry. I feel with all my heart that, I, that there was a time, a point when I could have done what Cole wanted to do, but I couldn't get peace about it because Pastor didn't have peace about it. But the, the week after that first time, when I just filled in on accident, she come in here, and I, I told her the Sunday after, I said, I might not ever go to big church again. <laughs> because let me tell you something. We think that we're spending all our time back there with our kids trying to teach them how to be like us in big church. When God says that we should be in here trying to figure out how we could be like them. I told her I might not ever go to big church again. I'm ha I'm, this is just too much fun. Well, she's been doing some work. She's done work with the kids. For, for those of you that don't know, my wife is not a kindergarten teacher, but I married a kindergarten teacher. Like, she's got it with kids. She's got that covered. I couldn't ask for a better mother for my kids. But through all of the process of everything, her attitude toward the ministry has been, it's all right for you to preach, but don't get crazy with it. Like, don't be thinking we're going to leave the church, this church and go anywhere else. You know, I'm not cool with that, so just mark that off your list. That's not happening. Uh. And I could have drug her, I could have just forced it and been like, we're going. Like, I want to go to this church and preach. Let's go. But I couldn't get peace about that. But the, the following week, she said, I'll tell you what, I know what they do back there in children's church. You don't. Why don't you just go sit through that, pay attention to what they do, and I'll just come in here. Well, lo and behold, that was the week that Lauren Sellers did her talk about uh and I wasn't in here because I was in kids' church, uh, I'm assuming it was something to do with her call to missions. And Tasha meets me after service at about the same spot that God got all over, all over me the week before and said, I think, you know, here Miss Kay is asking for a replacement. They had, we was just fresh off of an announcement. And after all this time of her being uncomfortable with everything, she meets me at the same spot, and I don't believe in coincidence, okay? But she said, I think we need to take the children's church. I went in big, I, and we call it big church, little church, okay? I went in big church and just prayed to God that he would speak to my heart. And I didn't know Lauren was speaking, but after that, I, I cannot sit back and do nothing. I think we should take the children's church. And regardless of, of, of any other circumstance, for no other reason than, than I mean, when, when my wife stood up 
right there in that hallway and said that to me. That was, I mean, I feel like that because I've been praying for her heart to be moved toward the ministry in some way. I was like, Lord, give me something. She's not on board with this. Give me something. I didn't know it was going to be kids ministry. Now, I'm not up here to claim that I'm a kid's pastor or anything. Else. I'm just told. But I know God's given me a desire to share his word. And he's given me the direction to do it with the kids. That's what's been going on. Uh, I thank y'all for bearing with me through this. I thank y'all for allowing me to work with the kids. But my prayer is that we can raise up some warriors for the cause of Christ that are unshakable in their faith. Not because of me or anybody else around here and what we could do, but because of Jesus Christ and what he can do when we teach them God's word. And I'll, with that, I'll just turn it back over to Brother Dennis.